Hey guys, Jason Timothy, MusicSoftwareTraining.com, and welcome to another video. Uh, so in this video, I am going to jump into the new, well, let's call it the updated, somewhat new effect called Shifter in Ableton 11.1. .1. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just drag this into the master track. This way I can just solo different parts and it'll just run separate parts into it. And that way you can hear how it sounds on different sounds, basically. So uh, this video is not going to necessarily be a tutorial on this as I don't know all the features well enough to really tell you exactly how you're supposed to use it. But let's experiment with it and let's see what, what we can get out of it. So I'm going to start with just a simple drum loop here. Cool, so jump over to our master and just by default, it's you're not gonna notice any difference. So there we go. Um, so let's go ahead and start with just kind of the basics that we can understand here. So what we've got over on this side is the shifter will pitch shift. It'll do frequency shifting and then ring modulation as well. So if we start with the pitch, the course is running by semitones. So this is pretty simple. Let's actually, for semitones, let's, uh, let's play this here so we can hear something with the melody or whatever. So nothing that we haven't been able to do before in Ableton. And this is a, more of a fine tune in between each semitone. And a cool way to, to use this if we wanted to get kind of that lo-fi lo sound that I can already recognize now would be like an LFO here. If we just had something like this and pretty slow. We can map this. So it gives that kind of tape warbly sort of thing happening there. But this also has an LFL built into it to do other things. And it runs all kinds of different waveforms here. So we'll get to that in just a second. Down here we have uh, delay and we'll get into that. Tone is basically just like a low pass filter. So if we have a sound going, So it's kind of like a subtle uh, low pass filter and it just cuts out some of the highest smooth things out. Uh, if we hit wide here, this is, it's, it says spread. I'm not really sure exactly what this is doing. Let's see here. Button inverts the polarity of the spread value in the right channel, creating a stereo effect. I played with this a little bit and I, it's, it's pretty subtle. Like you can kind of notice something, but it's not like noticeable as say using the width here. Right, so we've got that there. If I use this here, So a different effect all, all together. Window here, I'm not sure what it does. I think it's it's kind of like the milliseconds is definitely like a, almost like a delay sort of time. But it says that lower numbers seem to work with higher frequencies and higher numbers seem to work with lower frequency sounds.
So interesting stuff there. Okay, so now let's get into the LFO. So we could choose, let's just start with a basic sine wave, just an up and down. And this is obviously gonna modulate the pitch. So this here, you'll notice that when it goes to frequency, this is uh, by Hertz and pitch is by semitone. So this, you can choose how many semitones you want to raise it up, up to 24 semitones and, and in between as well. So let's say like seven semitones or something like that. And then obviously the rate is how fast it's gonna And the spin basically gets an LFO running on one side, the left side and the right side, and they're running at slightly different speeds. So they're gonna bump up against each other in different ways, right? So you could get some interesting off rhythms happening between the stereo spectrum, which is kind of cool. And then phase is the same LFO the, in the, at the same speed, but you're shifting the left and the right. So if you, if you get a kind of a tight one, you get like a thickening sound. And then if you, you get like a 180, then it's kind of just going back and forth, left and right speaker. So interesting stuff there. If we come over here to envelope follow, this is also going to do pitch shifting in a different way. So every time it notices a new note, it's going to, let's turn this all the way up so that we clearly hear what this is doing. So when it's up, we're gonna get, start off with a higher pitch, and then it's gonna quickly go down within 200 milliseconds. So the attack is six milliseconds, release 200 milliseconds, and we can adjust that as we go. So. Let's try it on frequency. And if you go the opposite direction, it's going to kind of go from low to high. And now we're getting into kind of weird territory where we're really morphing the sound. If you want to like really enhance the original sound, then it's probably going to be more subtle. Now with delay, we can get some really interesting effects. So let's start with like a quarter note and we'll feed this back. Right? Now, something interesting happens when we change the chorus. So let's just, actually, let's do this with pitch. Let's turn this up uh, three semitones. Or actually, let's go seven. So we're, we're going to actually kind of do like a circle of fifths sort of thing. And you'll notice that every time it feeds back, it's going to raise the notes seven semitones higher and higher and higher. So every time it feeds back, it's feeding back the, the last one. So it's gonna create kind of this ladder of frequencies. Kind of like that. And if we go the opposite direction, then you'll notice the notes going lower. Let's just go two semitones here and we'll bring this to one, one eighth. Just 
play a little bit more with this here. Let's try the sample and hold. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, let's turn this all the way up to wet so we're just hearing what this is doing. Oh, I'm going to turn the delay off so we get, and we'll put the course to zero. Okay, now we've got this width here. So once again, a little more stereo action here. Play with the rate. Cool, let's uh, try triangle 16. This is an interesting one because it seems to have kind of a jagged kind of step ladder going up and down. Let's put the face uh, right back to zero so we can play with the duty C. And this here actually can morph the waveforms. So that's pretty interesting. Rectangle. What this duty C will do is, is kind of take this, this square wave and it can turn it into like a pulse wave. Right? So. And then we can get into the stereo phasing. Let's try ring modulation. Let's uh, play with the uh, envelope follower. Let's bring back the original sound, see what... So there's a little, those sort of things can add interesting kind of background atmosphere It can really add to the sound even though it's really subtle. Another thing I really like is on the ring modulation, we have this drive, and the drive sounds really nice, I think. Obviously, we can uh, run these to tempo as well, so a quarter note. Once again, let's uh, play with the delay. Keep this under control, turn that off. And I like the combination of the feedback and the drive. Sounds uh, pretty interesting. So 
Let's get into the frequency real quick. We haven't really played too much with this. So let's do go to random. Turn the delay off. Cool, so let's uh, try this on drums here. You get some really interesting things going on here. Try the ring modulator. And because uh, I think this has more transients, you're going to notice the envelope follower reacting more strongly to this. So let's uh, keep that there. Add more feedback. So something else I wanted to get into here. Let's uh, let's solo this here, and I'll turn this off real quick so you can hear. Okay, so just long notes. This can be pretty cool when it comes to making risers and things. So we could just go to pitch. And let's go to a saw up. And we could start here, just put that to zero. And let's see, yeah, we'll just leave that like that for now. And if we slow down the rate, we can get a long kind of riser sort of sound. And we don't even need to, let's just do that. If we uh, play with the phasing, we get a thicker, wider sound. So 
So now let's go ahead and uh, check out some of the presets, see if we missed anything cool that this thing can do. So we've got a few over here. We'll just kind of randomly go through it. Uh, let's uh, listen to the drum loop first. We could switch back and forth between a couple sounds. It's pretty interesting. Let's uh, hear with this. All right, let's go to Damien. Almost like a strange type of vibrato sort of thing. Uh, dirty tunnel. See how it sounds on drums. Not too interesting on drums. Dirty tremolo. It's probably going to be, let's try it on like melodies. Drums. Interesting. Uh, electric distortion. Almost sounds like a flock of birds outside or something like that. Interesting. Okay. Um, mudslide. It's dark sounding, but I don't know how useful. Uh, race car. Pretty terrible on drums. Uh, let's see what we got here. Shifter flanger, sure, why not? <laughs> Nothing that the flanger itself can't do. Let's try the tape malfunction. Kind of cool. Let's see what it does on something melodic. I think at a lower wet dry, probably has a better effect on that one. Uh, transmission. All right, kind of a trill sort of sound. Cool. And oh, we got trill switch, so we were playing with that before twisted riser. So I think with, oh, 
with the delay, uh, that definitely had quite an effect. Kind of gives it like a never-ending rising sound. Uh, let's do wobbly octave down. <laughs> It's kind of an interesting rhythm. Let's play with the course a little bit. Get into tone territory. So yeah, there you go. That's the uh, frequency shifter. Hope you get something out of this video as I experimented. Uh, my suggestion would be, you know, use it for subtle things, maybe tweak some of the presets if you're not sure what to do, or just record yourself having fun with it and just completely misuse it and record everything to another track and then cut those bits up and you might have some really interesting stuff that you didn't expect. So once again, that's the shifter. I'll speak to you guys real soon. Happy music making.